Hello everyone and welcome back to Spearman Studios. You may be wondering why I'm wearing these goggles. Well, I don't know, I just thought it was cool. So, I have some announcements and some Blu-ray pickups from the past month and a half or so. But I want to start off with the news. So, as far as the Halloween 40th anniversary party goes that I promised in the last video, it's not going to happen. I didn't get enough money to get down there, so instead, I'm going to be planning on covering the Eastern Oregon Film Festival in the Grand October 18th through the 20th. And you may be wondering, okay, so how are you going to do the Halloween 2018 review? Well, I'm planning on doing the Halloween 2018 review after the film festival is done because I'm just going to be covering that. So yeah, I will be having my camera. Uh, it's not those reviews are not going to be heavily edited, um, and I'm going to have my camera with me, and so I'll have a, a whole culmination of reviews from the film festival uh, on uh, online by the 21st of October, and hopefully the Halloween 2018 review by the 22nd of October. Secondly, uh, I am announcing a new series of reviews. So recently I did the Predator series. I'm going to be doing the Halloween series, which the next episode, or the first episode, is going to be uh, September 21st, uh, Friday. Um, so if this goes up on a Friday, then you know it's already up. But uh, my next series is something that's a bit magical, and uh, something a bit whimsical, and that will be Harry Potter, the entire series all the way up through Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And these episodes will be Mondays and Fridays, starting the week of October 12th, uh, all the way up to November 12th, uh, the same week as Fantastic Beasts, uh, Crimes of Grindelwald. So this is just going to be kind of a retrospective review, and they're all going to be individual episodes. So don't expect what I'm doing with the Halloween series to be like, you know, the Harry Potter series, because that's it's going to be different. Uh, there is a reason why I did the Halloween movies all as three parts, as you'll see later, but, um, you know, the, the Harry Potter series will be a, it will be quite different. So, there's that, and uh, let's get into the Blu-ray pickups. So, we've, we kind of have a nice little handful of movies here, uh, and we're going to go all the way through them. So, first up, Batman Return of the Cape Crusader. I remember watching this when it came out. I got it um, in Redbox, and it's actually a really fun movie. It makes fun of itself, which is good. It doesn't fully take itself seriously, uh, but it's also kind of there's some there's some stuff in it that reminded me of the Lego Batman movie, how self self referential it became at times. It's such a fun movie. Uh, little do you guys know that I actually live near the place where uh, Adam West was born. He he was in uh, Walla Walla, Washington for a long time in his life. And I thought that was really cool, you know, living in the Pacific Northwest and, uh, and having such a legend of Adam West, uh, the 66 Batman, as part of uh, the history of the Pacific Northwest. So there's that. This is a good movie. Uh, second up is the final appearance of Adam West in anything, Batman vs. Two-Face. I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet. Uh, it's been quite a while since this was released. I never watched it. I just got this in the mail today. I'm going to be watching this. Uh, but it, from what I heard, this is a very goofy film, much like the original film. But it's, I don't know, it, it has William Shatner as Two-Face, and I'm excited for that. So there's, there's that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch that. Uh, keep it up with the Batman hype train. Uh, Batman Under the Red Hood. Uh, another thing I just got in the mail today. Uh, apparently people say that this is the best Batman film ever. Uh, although I would say that Mask of the Phantasm is, but I'm excited to see what, what this has in store because I haven't seen this one. I, heard, I know Red Hood's in it. I know Jason Todd's in it. Uh, so there's that. The Death of Superman. Uh, a I watched this one a couple of nights ago, and it actually managed to bring me to tears because it was just so good. And I just kept thinking to myself, why the hell isn't there a good Superman movie? Like a live-action Superman movie that's on the same level of emotional depth as this movie. Like, it's not like 
it's not art house, you know, in depth, but it does manage to capture what we as fans love about the character. It's not the fact that he's all super, it's the fact that at times he's challenged humanly, you know? You know, he has his own own problems. Like, in the film, he struggles to try to tell Lois Lane his secret because, you know, everyone else has told uh, their secret to their loved ones, but he hasn't. He's a bit insecure, and it, it's such a good film. And I wish more films tried to consider Superman that way. Uh, they haven't yet done that, in my opinion, in the live-action movies, except for the original uh, Superman movie. Even that film's a bit ridiculous at times, but, you know. Deadpool, the super-duper fucking cut. Um, that's what I'm assuming that's what it says, but uh, with the, uh, the whole censor bar. Uh, I haven't actually gotten a chance to watch the extended cut, but I, but I am going to get to it. Uh, but I do like this film. I don't think it's as good as the first one. But I do think it's funny as hell. It's a funny film that borderlines on the mass territory. It's it's so fun. It's a fun film. And, I, and I'm adding it to my collection because of that. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I didn't have this in my collection. I had bought the Harry Potter collection. And I never had this film. Uh, and now I have it. So now it'll be part of the whole Harry Potter, um, marathon. Next up is the Halloween collection. Uh, I had to buy this about a month ago to start my reviews on Halloween series, which you'll start seeing every Friday for the next couple weeks. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this has all ten, uh, Halloween films, including, uh, the bad ones, which I'll talk about in my reviews. I don't want to give anything away on my views on them, but there's all that. Hocus Pocus. Because Hocus Pocus. It's a bad film, but it's so cartoony and over the top. It's so melodramatic that I just can't help but like have it as a guilty pleasure. It's not a good movie, but it, but it's it's oddly enjoyable. I'll say that. The Incredibles on 4K. Um, my first real Disney animated uh, film to be in 4K. Um, as far as the upgrade goes, like I, I remember going to the double feature to watch The Incredibles 1 and 2. And this was the... It, they showed the upscaled version of The Incredibles. And boy, does some of the animation look dated for this movie. Like, there's a scene where... Um, where Mrs. Incredible is washing Jack Jack in the bathtub early in the movie, or not in the bathtub, but in the in the sink, and it looks kind of bad, like it's it's not that good. But at other to but at other points, it's pretty good. Uh, I will be picking up the sequel because that has some really brilliant animation. Uh, same thing, it's going to be on 4K. Um, next up uh, is the 4K title of The Avengers. I finally picked it up. Um, and uh, I am going to be starting to upgrade all of my MCU films into 4K, uh, just so that everything is neat and spick and span, uh, because I do love this franchise pretty much. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff about it. Sure, at times it can be very standard, but when it comes down to it, they manage to do what a lot of other superhero movies don't do, and that's follow a three-act structure most of the time. Uh, but yeah, The Avengers on 4K as well as Avengers Age of Ultron on 4K. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how this will look in 4K. I haven't actually watched the 4K version of this. Uh, but <laughs> we'll see. I, I, I wonder if the uh, the Ultron bots uh, will hold up so well. I don't think so. Lights out. Uh, I bought this for $7. And it's a very, very interesting horror film. It's not the best horror film, but it's really inventive I, and I know this is based off of like a short film that this guy later on made himself as a full movie but it's pretty damn inventive it's pretty cool because we because like because as kids we're afraid of the dark and what's better than having a monster that inhabits the dark that's pretty fucking cool right that's what I think anyway uh, I got two more titles and that's it so uh, 
Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. I remember from my review, I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of this film, but being a completionist, I had to pick it up. Um, it's not my favorite movie of the franchise. It's not even a great film at all, but it's a completion status. So uh, I might watch it maybe on a Saturday night when I'm bored, but, you know. Uh, and last but not least, Upgrade. Uh, Upgrade is a great fun film for $5 million budgets go. Uh, this is a very fun, entertaining, grindhouse sci-fi movie. It's not the best, but in terms of how it's executed, it's really good. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not best of the year, right? But it's really cool. I really enjoy it. So, there's that, and uh, thank you so much for watching my video. And I'll be sure to start on the Harry Potter review series very soon. So, take care.